Mike Bloomberg owns more wealth than the bottom 125 million Americans. That's wrong. That's immoral. It's ridiculous. We're not going to throw out capitalism. We tried that. Other countries tried that. It was called communism, and it just didn't work. Let's talk about democratic socialism, not communism, Mr. Bloomberg. That's a cheap shot. Let's so maybe just the tax code. Why are you complaining? Who wrote the code? You, you and your, did. You and you your and campaign. The other 99 con- you and your camp. Not me. You know, when we talk about a corrupt political system bought by billionaires like Mr. Bloomberg, it manifests itself in a tax code in which not only is Amazon and many other major corporations, some owned by the wealthiest people in this country, not paying a nickel in taxes, we have the insane situation that billionaires today, if you can believe it, have an effective tax rate lower than the middle class. So maybe just the tax code. Why are you complaining? Who wrote the code? You You did. You and your campaign. You and your camp. Not me. You and your campaign contributions, electing people who represent the wealthy and the powerful. Those are the Democrats. Thank you. Well, and Republicans too. Okay. And George W. Bush as well. We have a grotesque and immoral distribution of wealth and income. Mike Bloomberg owns more wealth than the bottom 125 million Americans. That's wrong. That's immoral. That should not be the case when we got a half a million people sleeping out on the street, where we have kids who cannot afford to go to college, when we have 45 million people dealing with student debt. We have enormous problems facing this country. And we cannot continue seeing a situation where in the last three years, billionaires in this country saw an $850 billion increase in their wealth. Congratulations, Mr. Bloomberg. But the average American last year saw less than a 1% increase in his or her income. That's wrong. I can't speak for all billionaires. All I know is I've been very lucky, made a lot of money, and I'm giving it all away to make this country better. And a good chunk of it goes to the Democratic Party as well. Should you have earned that much money? Yes. I worked very hard yeah. for it. And I'm giving okay. it away. Oh, thank you. You know what, Mr. Bloomberg? wasn't you who made all that money. Maybe your workers played some role in that as well. And it is important that those workers are able to share the benefits. Also, when we have so many people who go to work every day and they feel not good about their jobs, they feel like cogs in a machine. I want workers to be able to sit on corporate boards as well so they can have some say over what happens to their lives. The best known socialist in the country happens to be a millionaire with three houses. What I miss here? Well, you'll miss that I work in Washington, House 1. That's the first problem. Live in Burlington, House 2. That's good. And like thousands of other Vermonters, I do have a summer camp. Forgive me for that. Where is your home? Which tax tax haven do you have your home? New York City, thank you very much. And I pay all my taxes. And I'm happy to do it because I get something for it. And let me say, I thought the senator next to me was half right. Maybe we can talk about a billionaire saying that we should not raise the minimum wage or that we should cut Social Security, Medicare and Medicaid. If that's a way to beat Donald Trump, wow, I would be very surprised. Thank you, sir. Fortunately, I make a lot of money and we do business all around the world. We are trying finally to do is to give a voice to people who after 45 years of work are not making a nickel more than they did 45 years ago. We are giving a voice to people who are saying we are sick and tired of billionaires like Mr. Bloomberg seeing huge expansions of their wealth while a half a million people sleep out on the street tonight. And that's what we are saying, Pete, is maybe it's a time for the working class of this country to have a little bit of power in Washington rather than your billionaire campaign contributors. Uh, uh, Absolutely not. I can't think of a ways that would make it easier for Donald Trump to get reelected than listening to this conversation. It's ridiculous. 
We're not going to throw out capitalism. We tried that. Other countries tried that. It was called communism, and it just didn't work. So, so let Let's talk about democratic socialism, not communism, Mr. Bloomberg. That's a cheap shot. Let's talk about democratic. Let's talk about what goes on in countries like Denmark, where Pete correctly pointed out they have a much higher quality of life in many respects than we do. What are we talking about? We are living in many ways in a socialist society right now. Problem is, as Dr. Martin Luther King reminded us, we have socialism for the very rich, rugged individualism for the poor. Wait a second. When Donald, let me finish. When Donald Trump gets $800 million in tax breaks and subsidies to build, link, to build luxury condominiums, that's socialism for the rich. Wait, when wait Walmart, we have to subsidize Walmart's workers who are on Medicaid and food stamps because the wealthiest family in America pays starvation wages. That's socialism for the rich. This, this is I believe in democratic socialism okay, for enough. working people, not billionaires. Health care for all, Wait, educational Senator. opportunity all right, for all. Senator, thank you. Mayor. And if you take a look at my plans, the first thing I would do is try to convince Congress, because they've got to do it, we can't just order it, to roll back the tax cuts that the, Ob that the um, uh, uh, Trump administration put in with the, uh, through Congress. Somehow or another, Canada can provide universal health care to all their people at half the cost. UK can do it, France can do it, Germany can do it, all of Europe can do it. Gee whiz, somehow or another, we are the only major country on earth that can't do it. Why is that? And I'll tell you why. It's because last year the healthcare industry made a hundred billion dollars in profits. Pharmaceutical industry, top six companies, $69 billion in profit. And those CEOs are contributing to Pete's campaign and other campaigns All up right. here. Let's clear this so up. So maybe, right maybe it right. is finally time that we said as a nation, enough is enough. The function of a rational health care system is not to make the pharmaceutical industry and the drug companies rich. It is to provide health care to all people as a human right, Mr. not a privilege, Mr. Vice President, no premiums, no copayments, no deductibles. Um, I don't think there's any chance of uh, the senator beating President Trump. You don't start out by saying, uh, I've got 160 million people I'm going to take away the insurance plan that they love. That's just not a ways that you go and start building the coalition that the Sanders uh, camp thinks that they can do. I don't think there's any chance whatsoever. And if he goes and is the candidate, we will have Donald Trump for another four years, and we can't stand that. In order to beat Donald Trump, we're going to need the largest voter turnout in the history of the United States. Uh, Mr. Bloomberg had policies in New York City of stop and frisk, which went after African-American and Latino people in an outrageous way. That is not a way you're going to grow voter turnout. What our movement is about is bringing working class people together, black and white and Latino, Native American, Asian American, around an agenda that works for all of us and not just the billionaire class. And that agenda says that maybe, just maybe, we should join the rest of the industrialized world, guarantee health care to all people as a human right, raise that minimum wage to a living wage of 15 bucks an hour, and have the guts to take on the fossil fuel industry because their short-term profits are not more important than the future of this planet and the need to combat climate change. Those are some of the reasons we have the strongest campaign to defeat Donald Trump. Why we are today the only major country on earth not to guarantee health care to all people. Why three people own more wealth than the bottom half of America when 500,000 people sleep out on the street. Why hundreds of thousands of bright young kids can't afford to go to college and 45 million remain in student debt. Bottom line here, real change never takes place from the top on down, never takes place from an oligarchy controlled by billionaires. 
We need to mobilize millions of people to stand up for justice. That's our campaign. Join us at BernieSanders.com. Thank you.